What is going on, everybody? I am your host, at least one of them. I'm the one with a little bit more hair than Neil's, DK Hammonds, here in Dallas, Texas. And I have the lovely, the smart, the intelligent, the brains behind it all, Sister Kim Tarleton. How you doing, Kim? How's it going? What is up? What is up? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm fantastic today. If if y'all don't know, uh, Kim is a delight and um, a, I have some other adjectives, superlatives, if you want to throw in there, uh, just, just getting to know her. But Kim, tell our audience who you are and what you do. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Kim Tarleton, I am the general manager of the church communications group, and yeah. um, I get to work with churches every day. Um, the capital C church is what I get to work with. So about 26 years I spent in full-time ministry doing creative ministry, um, everything from uh, doing stage productions to also overseeing communication, overseeing worship and uh, production and all those areas, video, um, having a fun, having fun. Just having a blast yeah, uh, working that. in the local church. Um, yeah. And then God called me uh, a while back. God called me to the Big C Church and to lean in uh, with everything that I've experienced, everything that I've learned and, and how I've grown in those 26 years. He's like, I'm ready for you to take that beyond these walls. And yeah. I was like, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. I'm ready for it. Here <laughs> yeah, we go, God. Yeah, yeah. And um, and he's been he's been using me ever since. Um, and so I'm a part of the missional marketing group of companies. Um, yes. their missional marketing has is an umbrella company with multiple brands underneath the that umbrella. And Church yeah. Communications Group gets to be one of them, and I get to hang out and oversee that team day in and day out. I love that. That's a, now, that's what... a fast version. That's the elevator <laughs> version. Yeah, that's an elevator version. I love it. Now, one of the one of the things I think most people will and we'll talk more about this as we kind of flow through this conversation is how I got introduced to church communications. Yeah, was through a Facebook group. Yes. Um, and in that Facebook group, I think it's I think you guys' number is like thirty four thousand, something like that. It's some crazy number of yep. people. Of that's people that's a, that that want to be a part, want to have full knowledge of how to do church communication. Yeah. For me, as a person, as a practitioner of this, I've been doing church communication in some capacity for a while. And yeah. so when I got a chance to come into the room, I didn't want to personally like throw myself out there and be too much. Kind of just wanted to watch and observe. Mm. One of my favorite things, and I'll let you talk about church communication next. One of my favorite things about church communication is the file folder. The oh. file folder in church communication has all of the goodies in it. Yes. For you to go back and look. So if you're looking for documentation, workflow, all that kind of stuff, that little file drop has all the great things. Yes. So for those who are not uh, privy to church communication group, the mm-hmm. Facebook group, yeah, help us understand how that helps people yeah. And how they can help audiences that handle social media. Yeah, no, I, th- that's a great question. Um, I'm just going to like quickly go back. Facebook that's group cool. started like you guys can all find it. If you're not in that group, go get in that group. Yes, you're right, DK, about 34,000. I think we're I think we're like 90 people short or something like that. Uh, you got to get 30, that 40,000. You, yeah. you guys start yeah. clicking <laughs> follow right now. Yeah. Um, if you're not in there, get in there. Um, in 2015, Katie Alred, this genius. That is just hidden yes. over there in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, came up with this thought of like, what if we used social media? What if we used this Facebook that was existing and, you know, groups weren't really like a, a, a popular thing at that point? Um, mm-hmm. What if we formed a group um, just to like have some community and start talking communicators among each other and start sharing mm-hmm. with each other? Um, and so she launched along with uh, her partner, Daryl, at that time, they launched the Facebook group, the Church Communications Facebook group. And mm-hmm. um, it has been growing and thriving ever since then. And the genius behind the Facebook group is the people. And Mm -hmm. that different churches are asking questions. People are asking questions and they are helping each other. Different leaders of churches, different ministry workers of churches are leaning in and helping support each other. 
providing each other with resources and answers to questions and ideas and all that stuff. And so that's where the file folder comes into play right there in that Facebook group. There is a folder with access to all sorts of materials and resources for churches to be able to use to be able to advance their ministry, advance their communications. Um, now, that now one of the things is like a lot of those materials have been provided by other churches, right? So like if you click on it, you might see that the other church's branding is in there. But the idea would be to take that and go yep. ahead and implement that and start using like if you're like, oh, this strategy really works well for social media or for this and that. Like, I would love to implement that make it your own. Like, don't like take it, copy it and be like, Hey everybody, here's this church. And like, let's just, no, no, no. Take it, formulate it and make it your own and start using that. And like the resources are there. So, so often in communications and in different ministries, we feel like we have to start from the beginning. We feel alone. We feel like we have to start, uh, like somebody says, Hey, give us, put a social media strategy together. And you're like, where do I begin? Like, oh, yeah. and now we go to, you know, we go to chat GPT and we say, put a social media strategy together. Absolutely. What, about, what about that raw, like somebody has actually taken hours of time to build that strategy out. And I can take that and kind of use that as a template of building my own out. So yeah, that's what I, I love that that those are provided there. Um, mm-hmm. We also with the church communications group, we are just now launching what is called the CC plus and um, and those types of resources. Boom. Those types of resources are going to be available to churches for free through CC plus. You know, Life Church has their like resourcing. Right. Yes. Um, this is communications resourcing. It is mm-hmm. free. There's a, there there will be paid levels. But right now, like it is it is free resourcing and all those resources that are in. How many times can I say resources right now, DK? You oh, need like say it, say it. <laughs> oh, resource. Oh. Free resource. Yes. And another resource. And let me resource you now. Yeah. Um, all those resources that are in that Facebook group are going to be moved here as well as hundreds and hundreds of others that yeah. are coming our way. Our teams are creating. Um, and we just want to make sure churches are set off on the right path. So yeah, I it's, it. it's genius stuff. I love the, the, the social media side of it. Like, um, in there, you can see like other graphics or other things that people have done in their social media um, that you as a church kind of advance and move forward in your social media strategies. Good. That, that's good stuff. And again, the, 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 to get into the group, it doesn't cost you a fee. Go nope. ahead, find church communication. They are now at, as I just checked, 35,000 people. We made it. Strong. <laughs> Um, to to resource so church communication yeah has this um this overarching one place fits all mm. let's define what church communication is and let's define it in a way that people that are not introduced to us or some pastor that's in rural america who has no idea about what we do let's let's make it clear to them on how church communicate, what it is, and how it impacts what we do day to day. Yeah. Yeah. So um, at the church communications group, we are focused um, on a day in and day out basis is helping churches find clarity, confidence, and connection in their church communications. Um, Church communications as a whole is such a prime area of church ministry in bringing things like those three areas, bringing the clarity in our messaging. Who are we? Who, like, what does our community say about us when they talk about us? And let's hope they're talking about us, whether it's Mm -hmm. good or bad, whether they're like that church, they had way too many people and there was cars (laughs) all over the place. Praise the Lord. Let's do it again. Right. 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 Want that we want them talking about us. What are they saying about us? What is the message we are putting out there? What is our pastors preaching and speaking on on a daily basis? And we want to find clarity in that messaging, right? And communications in your church helps you find that clarity and find those ways to say, like, Pastor, you are spending hours every week preparing that message. That mm-hmm. message now should move into 
option number two, three, four to 10, where that message now becomes a blog. That message now becomes quotes that are on our social media and inspiration on a daily basis. That message can be dug deeper into a podcast. We have all these elements that we can start moving that messaging forward. And when we have the clarity behind that, we have support. We have like, yes, this is where we go and this is how we do it. And when a pastor and the leadership can team up with your communicator, you, your communications leader, um, you can find that clarity. You can start leaning into the clarity across the board. What does this look like? Um, the confidence side. There are so many of us in ministry. I mean, I spent 26 years in churches and let me tell you, I walked into many rooms where I was like, I don't know if anybody's going to listen to me. Like, I don't even know if what I'm saying is the right thing to say. Like, I joke Ooh. about it all the time. When I started with missional marketing, I was like, yeah, SEO is so good. You need that SEO. And I'm like looking up, I'm like, Google, what is SEO? You know, like <laughs> we have to find that, that confidence in what we're saying and what we're doing and how we're presenting our plans and our action plans. We work with so many young uh, communicators mm. who are like, if I get time in front of my pastor, I get scared and I don't know what to say. And mm -hmm. like, you're there for a reason. Like you're in your place for a reason. Yeah. Finding that confidence in what you're saying and knowing what I'm about to put out there. If this is a crisis management plan, if this is a social media strategy, if this is an e a change of our email systems, when I'm putting it out there, I have full confidence that this is the right direction for us as a church. This is not me being like, this is what we need to do because I think this is great because I like it as Kim and I think I'm amazing. No, no, no. This is going the church as a whole. I understand it. I understand the vision brought by God to our yes. leader. The leader has cast that vision. I now have come up under it and I'm yes. going, great, this is the way we elevate that vision and yes. that confidence you can have when you move that forward. Mm, you, you've got, you've got high fives from me. And then the That's connection, good. the That's connection good. part, there's nothing more important. Like in the Facebook group is absolutely that there's nothing more important than not feeling alone and yeah. ministry feels so alone, right? Like I was yeah. just talking with Katie at our conference last week. Um, and I brought, and she was like, I was like, why, why the Facebook group? And she's like, cause I felt alone. I felt mm. alone in ministry. And that is so not what we're called to. We are called to community and we are called to do this together. We are not in competition with the church down the street. No, mm. we're in competition with Satan, y'all. I just said it. Satan is the competition yes. and he is going to win if we don't stop fighting each other. So the mm. connection and the community that we can have in our churches and bringing that together, win. Oh, <laughs> yo, that, how could you follow behind that? That That's so good. So, so rich as it relates to partnering with vision yeah connecting with the local church to um take the messaging to the global church yeah uh understanding our 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 chief focus is to bring god bring god glory to bring yeah. heaven to earth amen and to really put the enemy the devil in his rightful place which is away yeah. from us right yeah and those things are true. And I, I, I even love the community part because there's so many people that want to do church uh, communication. And when we yeah. say church communication, to, to define in my words, is com the, the voice, tone, and brand in which we want people to experience, mm. wear, and share. Mm. Okay? That is your church communication. There. And if it is done well, then people can understand your vision clearly. Me and Kim were having a conversation prior to this about, you know, church communicators are the scribes on the wall. Mm. And the people run past the vision to see it so that it can be plain. We are there to make the vision plain so that people can partner, connect, come alongside, lock arms to yep. fulfill the mission of the church. Yeah, uh, that that is what it is. And so yeah. if you're looking at tiers, you would have break that down systematically. Now you're talking about how we email, mm -hmm. what newsletters we put out, what our social media feels like and look like. 
um, how we communicate and how people experience that inside the church as well as externally. Because right. what I think what's, what's funny is people forget that there's internal messaging and external messaging happen simultaneously when we communicate. And they yes. say, oh, no, that's, both these things are happening in, in duality. Um, yep. and, and then how things aesthetically look so that people can partner alongside with us. That yeah. is the ethos, I feel. And, and Kim, chime in, correct me if I'm wrong. That is the ethos of communication. Do you have something that you would add to that? No, no. I, <laughs> no, like you're spot on. You are 100%. That that is so correct, and that that is the heart, that is the passion of yeah. of church communications, just as Absolutely. a whole. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's church communication. So, if you have a person, you might want to pause the video now. Go find your person that is handling your yeah. social, handling your videos, handling your tech arts, handling your creative arts, and so they can sit down and have a conversation about church communication and. Here's my challenge to some pastor, sit alongside them and ask questions with them yes. that is related to how your vision can clearly be communicated to the people. So it mm -hmm. is beyond me how we exclude the smart people from the room. And let me tell you, your creatives, your church communication people, your marketing people, they're the smart people that need to be in the room with your vision so they don't know how to write it. They'll know how to make it feel and look, and you'll know how to communicate. It. We're here to make your job that much easier. And so as we, as we move forward, and we've talked about all the great things, and please go to Church Communications, get on the, find some resources, get on an email newsletter, get everything that you need yes. to be properly resourced. There's no reason why you're sitting around and not resourced and not have the information and tools Seriously? that you need to do this job. This job is a lot. This is. job is a lot. It so is. Kim, talk about how how big this job is when we're talking about church communications, because uh, now we're talking about in senior leadership who don't know a, a thing about it. How yeah. can we communicate it, how massive this job is that they're asking for us to do? Yeah. Um, so we always joke. We always say, and dot 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 right like we yeah. need to get the merch made that says a n d and dot 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 because mm -hmm. that's church communications church communicators are like those leaders and directors of those areas they are the and dot 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 at yes. the end because that's what they lean into when we have crisis in our church who do we go to we go to our communications team and we say yes. we have crisis. So, you know, things like um, I'm going to look, I'm going to talk about COVID for a second, right? Yes, when COVID hit, who got to go home and sit on their couch for three months? Most <laughs> of our teams got to do that, right? Student team is off, you know, kicking their feet up in the recliner, enjoying mm -hmm. their like, woo, we get the off. Like, let's post some stuff to students and make sure that they're okay. But most of the time, most of our teams were able to kind of go home and be home. But yeah. I don't know about you, but at my no. church, we it were works. still in the building. We yes. were still there. We were still making sure that we had a message that was getting pushed out because we had to live stream it and communications overseas the live streaming, right? And so uh -huh. we had to live stream a message. We had to get the pastor in there once a week to go and film that. We needed to get information out to our church. How are things going? When are we coming back in the building? We needed to make sure that all these pieces were constantly being taken care of. And we, like my husband is... Uh, in ministry as well. He's uh, right now he's full-time production director at the church. Yeah. Um, he was overseeing all the video elements during COVID. And like the two of us, we, we literally say like, we worked harder during COVID than we yes. ever did. Like we were yes. in the office more than we ever were before because there was so much more that needed to be leaned into. And yeah. church communications, it is one of those areas. It is massive. And when our leadership says, we don't need them at the table, ooh, ooh, you're not going to get a high five from me. Then. Like, and now I get it. If you're looking and you're like, well, we just hired this person from college. They're, they're green. They don't know what they're doing or so on. So, okay, like get them some coaching, like get somebody yeah. to go alongside them and walk through it. 
but you need communications at the table. You yes. need them there because they are going to help you sound better, look better. They're going to make sure that you are taken care of. And when those crises hit, they're going to make sure your voice is the right voice. And That's they're going right. to make sure that you are taken care of throughout it. Nothing more so like good. when COVID hit, our communications director that was on our team, she was at the pastor's house doing Facebook lives. Like our pastor's like, we've got the Facebook, but I don't know how to turn it <laughs> on. And, we're like, and she's got three babies at home at that time. She had, two, mm -hmm. she had two babies at home and she's going over to the pastor's house to help him do Facebook live because that's what church communicators do. They step in, they step into the messes, they step into the fun, they step into all of it. And they go, how do we make sure that our communities, that our church, that people know that we are a church that is here for them. They will find hope here. They will mm -hmm. find life here and friendship and relationship. And they are constantly going through that. Social media doesn't end. We are posting at 9 p.m. and at midnight. And when something happens in our community, we are the first ones to go, we are here. There That's is right. something in our community that is not going well. We are here. The church is here. We are praying for you. Come in. Come be a part. Mm -hmm. Social media is one of the first hits you get. It's 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 just one of those things that like communications is such a priority. It is so important for you and your church to be willing to lean in and say, we're going to make this a priority. And we're going to make sure that we get, if we have that person, we want to bring them to the table. We yeah. want to make sure that we are talking with them and, and resourcing them and caring for them and listening to them. You so know, cute. you said, you said something and that's powerful. <laughs> that's, that's so rich what you just said, because it is equally connected to this thought mm. that those of us in church communication are first responders. Yep. Right. Yes, and, that's it. Uh, and in every sense of the word that you can think of when it comes to media and yep. it comes to voice and it comes to brand and look, your first responder is the person that's a part of church communicator. Yeah, right? absolutely. And yes, you have the chief communicator, which is usually going to be a senior leader of some sure. sort. But the person that's executing that exit O, that's making the play, that's shooting the three pointer, is the church communication vote. So. Yep. I, I want to take the time and salute those of us who are in, who have been in this space, who've been in the trenches of church communication, who feel unheard, unseen. Uh, I want to let you know that we are praying for you. We are riding with you. We are supporting you. And I understand that there may be leaders who don't understand it yet. Yeah. But sure. don't get discouraged oh. because while they may not understand it yet, if you keep gently nudging them, God will keep speaking to them about the importance of this thing called communicating. And I think that's so rich and so necessary. So salute to the first responders of communication. We, we love and appreciate you. As pastors and church leaders, you know the power of prayer. But today's busy world, it's not always easy to keep your congregations connected and supported. That's where our friends at God Listens Digital Prayer Wall come in. At God Listens, they can help you create a space where the lonely can find comfort, the seeker can discover truth, and believers can grow in their faith. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Imagine a place where prayer requests are shared in real time, where your spiritual milestones and journeys are shared and celebrated, and where your congregation feels connected and supported no matter where they are. Don't let the barriers of time and distance limit your ministry. Text WALL to 67101 to learn more about how God listens and can transform your prayer life. With God Listens, you can expand your church's reach beyond the four walls of your building, creating a digital prayer community that's always available. Absolutely. Um, with this conversation, we we flowing. This is fire. This is good <laughs> stuff. Um, as we move throughout church communication, I want you to talk about some areas of opportunity, some previous mistakes that may have been made that wow. someone can learn from. Yeah. How would you go about that? Yeah. Um. Uh, I'm gonna lean into 
um, the mistake of not being prepared. Um, mm. So, uh, you know, DK, what I'm going to say right now is like the church is in crisis. It mm. just is. And we don't want some of us. We don't want to realize that we don't want we don't even want that to like like some people might hear me say that right now and be like, oh, one of these, you know, oh, we like not in, not our church not interested in that conversation. Um, that's not us. And, um, and honestly, like, I feel, I feel foolish not being prepared back in the day. And when things did hit, not knowing and not, again, not being prepared how to handle those situations, how to lean yeah. in correctly. Um, we, uh, at, uh, two churches ago that I worked at, uh, we had a crisis hit uh with a staff member that sure. um ended up, you know and it was a bad situation a pastoral yeah. uh staff member and we just we didn't we weren't prepared we didn't know how to handle that we we honestly like we were finding out about the situation by the news crews showing up at our building and like hey tell us more and we're like what are you talking about like yeah. we don't even know what's happening here right and um and we and we weren't prepared and mm -hmm. so we took that opportunity to say, oh, we need to get prepared. Here's what we did. We said we need to be prepared. We said it's time to start leaning in and figuring it out. But did we? No. Mm -hmm. We, it, it kind of went on. The situation ended. It, you know, something else became bigger news and we moved on. And then another crisis hit yeah. and we didn't manage it well. Because mm. we didn't actually do the homework to prepare ourselves. And so that's one of those things like right now for us at the church communications group, we are leaning in heavy. We are, we have our road shows. We go out once a month. We're yeah. hitting up churches and bringing churches in the room. We are in 2025. We are leaning in super heavy into crisis communication. There's gotcha. crisis management, but then there's mm. crisis communication. And how do we... How do we leverage our preparedness in crisis? And we have those crises coming. I mean, we, we, we have them in our church. We have them in our communities and we have them in the world. You have hurricanes happening and we're going, gosh, oh goodness, Convoy of Hope is going out there. Great. Let's push them $10,000. Okay. That's a, that's a thing. That's a thing. Now it's in our community and something just happened and are we a building that people can come into? Are we prepared for them to be able to come here and, and, and have, you know, have a safe place? Probably not. Um, I, this is going to, this is going to age me a little bit, but, um, 1996, I think it was, um, I was living in Southern California. The first church I was working at worked there 14 years living in Southern California and, um, 1996. Nope. I was not working there yet. I was just graduating high school. Uh, yeah. So there you go. Start putting some. It was like, it was, I, I would think I was like a senior or something in high school. And we had the Northridge earthquake. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it was a big one. It was like seven point something. It was a big rocker. Like the mall down the street collapsed internally. I lived about two blocks from that mall. Um, and I remember, I remember the earthquake. I remember how scary it was, but I remember my church being a place where all these families, I mean, mine included all these families, we couldn't go into our homes. Our homes were not safe anymore. And yeah. the church opened the building and we had food and we had water and we had shower situations and it was all, we were taken care of. Now, had they planned that? I don't know. Cause again, at that point I wasn't working there. I don't know if there was a plan. But we were taken care of. The community saw a church that wrapped around and said, we care and we're going to open our building up for you to come and live here. And we're going to take care of you. We're going to feed you. We're going to welcome you. And that made such an impression on such a young Kim at that time yeah. that that we were for our community. This was not, this was not just a prayer vigil. This was like, they true, they opened their doors and were sleeping on cots in the mm -hmm. hallways and all throughout. And like, that mattered so much to me. Um, that, it, that to, you know, to this day, it was easy for me to kind of go, the, the vision, the direction, the heart of this church 
is something I want to be a part of because yeah. that matters. And so n- letting our community, letting our church and our and the world know that we are prepared. We are prepared for whatever is going to come. Um, if COVID comes again, like we know we are prepared. How many of us were prepared for COVID? Nobody. Nobody <laughs> was prepared for COVID, right? And so we're prepared. We're prepared enough to know for you to know that the church is here for you. The mm-hmm. church isn't running around with like a dog with our tail between our legs going, how do we do this? When yeah. can we open our doors? But we're going, that doesn't matter. Are you safe? Do you, yeah. Are you okay? Like, yeah. we want to make sure you have what you need. If you can't leave your house because you think you might be sick, we're going to bring food to you. We're yeah. going to take care of you. And so being prepared, having a plan, that that's the one thing I regret back in the mm-hmm. day not having. And it's the one thing that I'm like pushing churches heavy on right now. Let's be prepared. Yeah, yeah that's preparedness. Uh, in every facet of communication, uh, I remember in COVID, we use that loosely here. Um, I was on Clubhouse yeah. every night, mm. almost, communicating during COVID. Really? Trying to figure out ways in which we don't stop. the Because I had saw how this kind of stopped us in our tracks. And I was like, well, I can still communicate over here. Right. And I can still communicate on my Facebook Live. What I'm doing in ministry has not stopped. I have to right. reorient because people are at home. Um, and so I think what, what you what, mentioning that is so critical because just because we're out of COVID doesn't mean we're out of planning. And and some of that. us feel like we're out of planning. No, something could happen. Yeah. And we need to be having, now I hate to use that broken English, we need to have something prepared for if this happens, then this is what we do. Here's our yep. document. This Here's what's we... in the glass case. Here's how we respond. If yep. if some somebody quote unquote falls to sexual immorality, okay. here's how we respond. If exactly. somebody does something in church they shouldn't have done, here's how we respond. There should be a manual and maybe Kim and myself can go behind the scenes and start creating something like this. Yes. There needs to be a communications manual so that when things like this occur, hey, here's how I handle this. Here's the first responders guide to uh, church communication to help us. So I'm going to answer the question. Yeah. What's a mistake in this business of church communication I've seen? Uh, I think the first mistake is using your words against church communication. Ooh, ooh. Mm. There's a lot of leaders that know that you need church communication, but actually see it as a waste. And Mm. they use, they leverage their words and power against it. And that's wrong. Because that moment we just mentioned, if something happens, the first person you're going to call is this person over here to handle it. Let's let's push it further. To the pastor, to the teacher and a leader 20 plus years, to the pastor that loves to change graphics the night before. (laughs) You know, that that Saturday night bomb that you got to get out your bed to go fix because the Holy Spirit spoke to said leader. (laughs) <laughs> you need that church communication. I'm going to keep it a buck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need that church communication person, marketing person, graphic person on deck that can partner with you. Yep. Alienating and isolating them is the problem and the mistake. And so I see that happen more so than not. And normally it happens because of lack of understanding of what that person truly does. Which yeah. When I see that, I say you don't value their work and you don't understand what they do. So you don't really understand how your organization works. And that person is a central piece to who you are, what you do. So I think to that same piece, how church communication has helped me is it has allowed me to meet the biggest, brightest minds in the business. Mm. I've had a chance to sit in these rooms with these people who people watch on TV who I get a chance to just walk in their office and just be like, hey, man, how you doing? I'm DK. I do this. And this person is speaking to thousands, millions of people and making an impact. And so yeah. that's that has happened because I took a, a, a I took a 
a, a um a push from God in this communication time period and said, I wasn't going to stop because of something happening outside. I'm going to control what I can do inside. And yeah. so that's those two things are important. So please take those mistakes, gather them. And if you have a mistake, put it in the chat below. We'd love to talk about some of those things to help us. So final thought, because we we flowing and me and you probably could have a whole just talk you know, for days. Just talk talk about this because we're we're passionate about it. Yes. Fi final thought for you. Um, where is the future? Oh goodness. For church communication, and you can go either way you want to go. I know. I know that's going to be heavy. But where is the future? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. Um, for like church communications as a whole or for church communications group? You can do both. Either one. Okay. It's, oh, it, it, it's, it's wide right, open right. to do whatever you want to do. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, church communications as a whole, like, here's the thing, like, I, like, um, I, I, I'm just, I'm just, a, I'm a Bible junkie. <laughs> yes. Yes. We I, love it here. I, 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 we love it. Right. Um, and um, I was saying this uh, recently to somebody else too. Like, um, you, it, it's interesting. Like, we see the we see young people, um, and they they started wearing bell bottoms again. Mm -hmm. um, they have they're wearing mom jeans <laughs> that <Again>. like horrified <laughs> us. Okay, yes. like growing up, I was like, I will never be caught in a mom jean. And now, like, my daughter's like, let's go buy every mom jean we can find. I'm like. The fact you're calling it a mom jean and still buying it, um, weird, but they're going back. And then I'm seeing these young people too go from a place of like social media, all the things have been talking at people, you know, um, mm. we've talked at them for quite a long time and, um, and we're, we're getting to a place where we just want to be talked to and we want to be talked with, um, and so, yeah, I was saying this the other day, I almost feel like communications is going away from let's throw a bunch of stuff at people to yeah. let's bring them more into the conversation mm -hmm. with us. And that's, I would love to see communication continue to move in that way. Uh, Jesus didn't stand with a microphone and preach for an hour and then say, go. <laughs> And I'm like, leave, go home. No, he like sat with them and was like, let's talk. And yeah. he would, he would share stories and people yeah. would ask questions and all these things are happening. And he did say go, but yeah. he didn't say go home and have lunch. Mm -hmm. so it's Sunday. He said, mm -hmm. go into all the world and yeah. share this message yeah. with people. And, um, and so for me, I just see church communications going in that direction where we are more like Christ in yeah. the sense of like, let's talk and now go now yeah. get out of the building and go and share yeah. the message. And it's not about them coming in these walls. It's about you being resourced to go out of these walls. Um, so I, I guess it's, it's more, it's a, it's a hope along yeah. with like, I'm seeing little, little bits of stuff that maybe yeah. are heading in that direction. Good yeah. stuff. That's good. Yeah. Uh, it reminds me of this this uh, story a pastor once said. All of the great things that Jesus did usually started at a table and over Ooh. a meal. Ooh. Think about all of the great things that oh, yeah. he needed to communicate. Mm -hmm. He brought people to the table. Amen. He made them feel a part of community. Yeah. Right. And he shared a message for them to go out to the highways and byways to compel men to come. Yeah. And so I think sometimes we think social media can absolve us from that when it cannot. We still have to have both. Yeah. We still need the community. We still need the table. We still need the, the, the Christ centered communication um, to be that driving force so that when people leave us, they can leave with a sound word. Yeah. They can leave with a gospel centric word so they can share it with other people and bring people back to us. So yeah. I think the other thing, you, uh, the buzzword now is AI as the future. 
Yes. Um, and and let me tell y'all, I, I get in I get in tussle messages with with pastors all the time about AI and and how you shouldn't use it. And I'm a proponent that you should. You should yeah. use it in Absolutely. its proper context. It okay. is an assistant. It is not to be the leader. You are the driving force behind your AI. You yeah. can you can train your AI now. It'll speak back to you. It'll think for you if you will allow it and give it its prompts. But it cannot do and it cannot communicate as God has centered you. So AI is a it is a support mechanism. Yes. It is not a mechanism that is going to replace. And we have to nullify that idea that it's coming to take away something. It supports what we're trying to do. Think about this. If you wanted to write an SOP, right? Mm. So I'm big on SOPs, policies and procedures. If you want to write an SOP, I can write an SOP in AI in 20 minutes or five minutes, right, right. given its right you know, criteria. Yeah. You, normally that would take you days to write one. Yeah. I can write 10 in an hour. And so this takes away that process time. And, and so I think that AI is going to really help us. And to, so some pastors listening that thinks that church communication is using AI. Let me tell you, if you check your weather on your phone, you're using AI. Hey, yes. If you Say check that. your watch, you're using AI. Say that. You've mm. been using AI. So true. We just didn't label it as such. And let's right. start let's stop demonizing new things yeah. because we we're scared it's it's trying to replace us when it's not even set up to do that. Yeah. So that's what I said. So all right. True. We, we, this is good. And we've got to bring you back because this is fire. Man, you Man, can do this all day. I want to come back. Yeah, <laughs> um, Yeah. So, final thoughts. You're, you're talking to a, a seasoned veteran. What is your final thought for a seasoned veteran in church communication? Ooh, yeah. Seasoned veteran. Um, you never stop learning. That's like the, that's, that's my final thought. You never stop learning. You don't know what you don't know. Um, and again, like I'll go back to, I was in 26 years of ministry and I literally walked into church communications and like, whoa, I have a lot to learn. And yet I I'm seasoned. I've been doing it. I've gone through the crisis. I've gone through the big, I've marketed, you know, events for 20,000 people. Like I, I, I have some, some, I have some back. Um, That's right. And I don't know. I did not know what I didn't know. And Mm -hmm. so be willing and open handed to just continuously learn, to continue to invest in your learning, to ask questions and and, um, seek out people, seek out community. I think the, the worst of it is the seasoned veteran. They are the ones trying to do everything alone. Yes. And and don't don't do it alone. Like find those around you. And then on top of that, Start investing your knowledge in them. Find those ones that aren't seasoned, those churches that are bringing in these younger students fresh out of college and go, I'm going to invest into you, my knowledge, as I'm also learning and growing in this way. So rich. So good. So good. Kim, tell the people where they can find you and how they can partner with church communication. Yeah. So um, you can find me easiest at church at church comms on Facebook. <laughs> um, you know, I'm all for social media, but I am worse at my own social media. <laughs> I kind of have like a, if you go to Instagram and you're like, let's go find Kim on Instagram. It's uh, I'm under creative for the creator. So you can't even find me. My name's not even there. Nope. Creative for the creator. Like I started my Instagram when Instagram started and I was like, Ooh, what would be a schnazzy <laughs> name? Um, and creative for the creator is what I came up with. And now nobody knows where I'm at. Um, but like literally like once a year in January, I post like, it's a new year. <laughs> it's a family. <laughs> so you can find me at church comms, uh, which is on Facebook. Um, and you can, you can obviously you can message there. Um, but the best way to kind of get in touch with us would be to go to churchcommunications.com. Um, and right there, you can send us a message. You can set up a call. Um, you can even put on there. You, there's like a little notes. You can just be like, I would like to talk to Kim. Because I heard a podcast and I would love to just connect with Kim for a minute and they will make sure that you get on a call with me. So, yeah, that's fastest and easiest is uh, going to churchcommunications.com. Amazing. 
Next time, Kim and I are going to come on and talk about church communication and project management. Yes, we are. Woo! And Let's do it. I think, I think that's a... Here's, an, here's the entry level before we get up out of here. If you're thinking about how we handle process, how we handle photos, how we handle videos, there is a process, a rhythm to that that you have to identify. Yes. And usually that rhythm is located in project management and its tools. So before we got on here, Kim and I talked about Ray C and, you know, some of these work breakdown structure and all that kind of stuff. And I'm not telling you to go get a project management certification, but I am telling you to familiarize yourself with those tools like Asana, Trello uh, and Microsoft yeah. that could easily help you organize your your work work that you have, suite that you have and go from there. And so that would probably be our next topic of conversation. I think that's a really interesting conversation. Or that would be a conversation that Kim would have on her podcast right, with right. church communication. Right. Uh, so, Kim, I know, I don't know if that's a, one of the things we need to talk about, but tell us, I heard that church communication is dropping a podcast. We Can are. you share something about that? Yes, I can. Uh, it just dropped. Um, it is, you can find us at church communications on YouTube, wherever you follow podcasts and all that fun, uh, fun stuff. Um, it is called, Hey, we need to talk. Yeah. And, uh, there's such like a negativity behind that. Like you get a text message and it's like, Hey, we need to talk. There's such this like, Oh, that makes me just feel the guilt. Like, can we talk right now? <laughs> like, can we talk right now? Because you're like setting me up and it doesn't feel good. Well, we want to change the narrative. We yeah. want it to be like, Hey, we need to talk about social media. We need to talk about project management. Like, let's talk about these things. Let's change the narrative. Let's make it a positive. Um, it's me and my team, uh, multiple people from my team. My husband also jumps in there. Uh, sometimes he's good times. Uh, we laugh. Uh, we talk way too much about theater. Uh, so I'm going to push about that because we are, we are all theater junkies. So that's, a, that's a fun one too. Um, but yeah, we're leaning into hardcore into communications and, and everything in communications and it'll drop every Tuesday. So yeah, check it out. Check it out y'all. As a pastor and church leaders, you know, the power of prayer, but today's busy world is not always easy to keep up with your congregations connected and supported. That's where our friends at God Listens Digital Prayer Wall come in. And God does listen. They can keep and help create a space where the lonely can find comfort, the seeker can discover truth, and the believer can grow in their faith. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Imagine a place where prayer requests are shared in real time, where your spiritual milestones and journeys are shared and celebrated and where your congregation can feel connected and supported no matter where they are. Don't let the barriers of time and distance limit your ministry. Text WALL to 67101 to learn more about how God listens and can transform your church prayer life. With God Listens, you can expand your church's reach beyond the four walls of your building creating a digital prayer community that's always available. And check out yours truly social media church with myself and Neil Smith, the guru, the OG, the legend in this space. Uh, we have so many great things happening, whether it be with a social media church or Amplified, and we would just love to partner and assist in that area as well. So again, continue to follow us it, and we definitely want to thank our sponsors for supporting us as well. Please check them out. And if you have any questions, concerns, castinations, uh, conversations, please put them in the chat below. We definitely want to hear what you have to say about church communication right here with us here at Social Media Church. We love you. Peace. Bye, y'all.